Hi, my name is Kathy Zeidenstein. I'm speaking to you from lovely San Jose, California at the Silicon Valley Lab. I'm here with Dr. Vladimir Bakvansky, who's from a company called InfraData, and he's with us today um, to talk to us a little bit about data modeling. He's going to be doing a virtual technical briefing on May 13th, 2010, on the subject of best practices with data modeling. And so um, th I thought this would be a good opportunity to, to chat with him a little bit about his thoughts. So can you tell me a little bit about um, what you do at InfraData? So at InfraData, I deal with uh, training and consulting in the area of uh, data technologies and software architecture. And uh, we help clients uh, adopt these new technologies, and most frequently we work with the research and development teams of large companies. Okay, that's great. That's a good experience to have. Um, so you're going to be speaking to um, our audience about data modeling. Well, data modeling isn't new. It's been around for a long time. Can you tell us you know, what's new, what's changed, what's, what's ma making it important again? So data modeling is, again, a very exciting topic because it is not an isolated discipline anymore. We see that the data modeling has a very important uh, place in service-oriented architecture and in software architecture, and it is not an isolated island anymore. And uh, the other aspect that makes it very exciting is the emergence of a variety of agile approaches, and we need to see how the data modeling techniques fit into this, um, this area. Well, so, so that in mind, then what role does the actual tooling play with, with data modeling? Great question. Well, uh, if you look at, into the um, data modeling tools, so we can see that they would fit into two categories. We have tools that are accelerators. They make faster things that you could do by hand earlier. And we also have a new category of tools, which are enablers, tools that can do something for us that was nearly impossible or so tedious to do by hand uh, earlier. And the interesting thing in this space is the uh, set of capabilities that we have within the InfoSphere Data Architect, which will cover both of these areas. It covers the functionality of a traditional data modeling tool, but also, uh, to a great extent, through its heritage being uh, based on the Eclipse platform, we have great integration with other tools, and that enables us to integrate it with the product lines in a rational InfoSphere and uh, opt-in space. And now suddenly, uh, we get the synergy through these capabilities, and we can do things that were not possible with traditional data modeling. Another thing that seems to be happening or has been growing a lot lately is the use of object relational mapping tools by developers which, which hide the database you know, from the developers. Um, what impact does that have? Exactly. In the last uh, five years, we have witnessed a quite significant proliferation of a variety of object relational mapping approaches. What is interesting about them is that the uh, approach to the data access layer is happening uh, not from the data specialist but from the developer side. And the common theme in all of these approaches is attempt to hide the database. Now, that has a couple of consequences. One thing that teams typically notice is they are able to move very quickly and they show some initial successes. But on the other hand, the um, database is neglected, the data scheme is uh, not proper, and usually such teams in complex applications experience quite significant performance problems. And uh, in the last couple of years, we have seen a great disillusionment with uh, such approaches, and we recognize the need that the database needs to be properly designed, that the data access uh, needs to be um, done with regards to performance and high throughput, and automated solutions may not provide the optimal solution in uh, such situations. So uh, considering these factors, uh, we have seen um, a number of uh, technologies that uh, enable us to accept the database again, and um, through integration with development tools, for example, with the Optima Development Studio, we are able to achieve the high productivity that is often correlated with object relational tools, and at the same time, we get the full control over the database, and the database is not hidden anymore. So where specifically does data modeling fit into the software development process? Uh, so the data modeling fits into the development process in, uh, in various approaches. So first we have the uh, traditional approach where we start from the process and start breaking down the process. And uh, we see that the process has also another side, which is the data or information. So as we are modeling the processes, we should also model the data at the same time. Uh, we have also the importance of the data modeling from the service-oriented architecture, 
because we need to model the information that is stored and that is manipulated by the systems and also that is exchanged between the applications uh, through services. And um, for uh, demanding applications, we need to put a lot of emphasis on the actual data modeling, uh, design of the database. And uh, besides those technical issues, there is one important thing that is neglected, and this is logical or conceptual data modeling, where we are engaging with business stakeholders, make sure that we can capture the needs, information needs of their applications and systems, but not only isolated for one application, but also looking into the, into the whole enterprise. And this is where the data modeling tools can play a significant role. We've been hearing a lot about um, agile development lately. What is the impact of data modeling on um, agile development? Excellent question. If you look into agile development, you could see that there were a lot of complaints that the data uh, part of the development had more inertia and uh, it, it was not so willing to adopt the agile practices. Right. If you look into the reasons for that, we could see that many of the refactoring techniques for databases had to be performed exclusively manually. And uh, that is quite tedious, involves a lot of uh, repetitive uh, work. And uh, now with the emergence of tools like Infosphere, uh, Data Architect, and some of the tools in the um, Optim space, like Optim Database Administrator, we have better support to do refactoring of the databases. So now we are gaining the capability to follow the development team which is developing the application and follow their needs in terms of uh, persistence. And, um, with uh, capabilities that uh, we have in Infosphere Data Architect, now we can uh, realign our models with the actual database, with the actual physical uh, uh, database. We can compare the models, we can discuss the change, and suddenly we get a factor that enables us to have a much more productive uh, development of database applications where the refactoring of the databases is not a big obstacle and we can follow the rest of the team in their uh, agile approach. Your primary data modeling tool is Infosphere Data Architect. I mean, what, what features do you like about that product? Uh, when I talk about Infosphere Data Architect and if I compare it with the tools that I have used previously, most of the other tools were isolated islands. So I'm trapped in this tool and if I want to do something that uh, will go beyond the boundary of the tool, then uh, it, it's very problematic. Infosphere Data Architect being based on the Eclipse platform has a number of advantages because it is uh, allowing us to combine various other functionality that is delivered through Eclipse plugin and that opens it for integration with uh, rational tools, particularly with rational software architect. And um, from the process point of view that is really interesting because uh, in many organizations we start now with enterprise model and conceptual models and domain models which are actually created by users of rational software architect. The modeling notation there is UML in most cases. And um, I can simply import uh, such UML models into the data architect and continue with my logical modeling from there. On the other hand, we have also support uh, on the development side. So when I use the Infosphere Data Architect together with Optim Development Studio, I have a very uh, productive environment where I can go from my models to actual development of database applications. And using pure query APIs uh, can uh, deliver the data layer, which is efficient, and through tool support, I can also get it very quickly. Thank you very much for your time, and um, I hope you all can join us on May 13th for this virtual tech briefing. If you've already missed the event, then make sure you uh, register for the replay. It'll be available probably for at least a year. And um, look forward to seeing you then. Thanks. Thank you.